All right, first thing I got to do is grab Curtis's tractor and drill. This drill is pretty large, so we're going to just leave it on his tractor, make things easier. But wow, I've never seen his house yet. Beautiful out here. We are loaded and ready to go. Look at this baby right here. It's a nice drill. No-till, a real no-till. Alright, so the first thing I have to do is clean out as much of this corn as I can. And he's got every other row taped off. So I gotta pull them out since I'm planting buckwheat. He obviously planted corn last. Alright, so I got an idea on how to save a bunch of back labor on filling this. I mean, we've got over a half ton of uh, buckwheat because we're going to do like 10 acres worth give or take let's break out the uh the ns and see if i can load it in the bucket and then just dump it right in there and make it easier i really don't even have to lift the bag bucky wheat Head there way better than the old school way of trying to stand up here with some big bags and dump them in. I like it. Nice buckwheat in here, we're loaded. And I'll probably wait for Phil, just have him. I'm gonna I'll lube all these chains since it was sitting outside. I don't know if we're gonna want to increase the seeding rate. Curtis had it set for corn. I might wait for Phil, or I might not. I might just go start drilling, see how it goes because that's what we're looking at. Over a two foot span, this is how much seed's gonna come down. Let's see. Normal recommended rate because the deer are going to eat this. That's a lot of seed coming out. Okay, so you're still in a dough stage. You look, you squeeze it, and water comes out, it's still a dough stage, so it's not a viable seed. So the crimp, the crimp terminated. All right, I'm gonna get started drilling. And Phil is just doing a little bit of spot spraying. Uh, one of the reasons that this year I'm doing the buckwheat is to try and get ahead of the weeds. Uh, because uh, the former farming practices uh, created weeds that are pretty Roundup resistant. So we're trying the buffalo this year and just a little bit of spot spraying. So most of it ain't gonna get sprayed, but let's see what's gonna happen. All right, first pass right here. First pass, trying to buff it over. All right, the furrows look really nice. These packing wheels, I could see a couple of buck beats right there. Uh, I see them in that row there, so I think we're looking good. We'll need rain, but now we're now they're calling for no rain for two weeks.
okay, so this particular plot was just so thick with weed grasses and that. We're going to go ahead and zap the whole thing. So we're going to spray it and then crimp it and drill it, all three. All right, uh, just for my camera stuff, I'm, I'm tracking him with the green box, which is supposed to be the focus box. It's tracking him. We'll see how this one turns out. This field right here, I'm really trying to cheat it. I mean, this thing was so far gone with weeds. Uh, there was some grains in here from the fall plot, but... It's just a thick uh, mat of weeds, so... Trying to cheat a little. Um, we'll see what happens though. I mean, we'll see what the buckwheat does. everything that used to be farm field uh, except for our natural regen sections. So we got you know some naturally bare spots here. I'm drilling this whole thing. seed so uh, I'm crisscrossing trying to cut this grass down a little bit too I mean this is really should help the soil with all this uh, matter that's gonna decay on here this plot here is just hideous with weeds so uh, I did not even try crimping this but we did spray it we smoked this one pretty hot so uh, I'm hoping I can recover this plot and improve it So I don't know yet how this is going to work in these really, really thick spots because that is a big, thick mat over top of the seeds. But as of creating this video, it's uh, six, seven, ten days later, we do have germination on buckwheat in the, in the plots that were a lot thinner so far. So fingers crossed it can make its way up through this green, weedy mat. We'll see. Look at this field. What a mess. This uh, used to be one of my best clover plots. So. Uh redoing it this year. I do have a tower that's grown into them cedars right there. But a lot of good memories in this plot between me and the kids. Alright, this one's done twice. I'm hitting all of them with two, two passes now since we got plenty of seed left. Now, this is going to be a real interesting experiment. This is a thick, thick mat of grass. Uh, we did spray it, I uh, did not roller it or didn't crimp it because it's just pure grass. So we'll see what's going to happen. I mean, we've got plenty of seed down in there, but we'll see when it rains. And then if this grass starts dying off, it's going to be better, better for mulching and moisture in here anyway. So we'll see. Here's my big plot. A lot of good memories in that gray deer tower. Uh, that was here when we bought the property. It's really on its last leg, but 
I'll salvage it, use it as long as I can. So I hit this one twice. I'm curious to see how we're gonna do when we get some rain. All right, this field, even though it don't look like it, it's got salvageable clover in there. I just need to mow the top of it. That's really the only clover that survived. I mean, if you get in there and look under it, there's a pretty nice carpet. All right, here's a look at that same plot I'm working on right now. I went back a week later and I bush hogged the top of it. And now you could see the clover under there. I think I can salvage this one. You know, there's still some bare spots, but maybe with some clethodim and fertilizer, I can save this particular clover plot. The clover, a lot of, of course, bare spots, but I'm gonna mow this and see if it can resurrect the clover. And then I'm drilling into this uh, outer perimeter, which I normally 